We're actually back here. Okay. I didn't see Lily yet. So. Uh, nope. Doesn't look like it. So, we can walk sure. Uh, you guys want to come check out the yeah. bakery? Yeah. Here. So this was a bakery that the building was built in 1913 uh, as an offshoot of what was happening in the Socialist Labor Hall. Um, and that was used as a store and it was a community gathering place and a lot of uh, an important part of the Italian community here. And so this bakery was um, run as part of the operations over there. And it ran until I think it was about the 1940s or 50s, and then this building turned into a storage building. And um, recently, the Historical Society decided they wanted to restore the building and kind of return its function, turn it back into a bakery. And they have a model here where so they've restored they're the ones who are restoring this building and then they're going to look for a baker to come in and sort of lease the space and do baking but on their off days they also want to use this as a teaching kitchen sort of to uh, for students to work with you know wood-fired cooking techniques they have a partnership with the culinary program over at the Tech Center. They're gonna be coming here. Uh, community Connections. Um, King Arthur Flower is going to be having classes up here because they have folks, they have a small little oven uh, down in their place in Norwich. And as you'll see, this one is quite different. It's, it, this is a large oven. Um, Necky wants to utilize it for some of their culinary students and also part of the mission I think is to teach local folks and probably school groups too, you know, how to bake and how it all works. So they hired Jeremiah Church, who is an oven, a master oven builder. He used to uh, live in Vermont. Uh, he started Woodbelly Pizza. And his friend Dave, who he went to college with, is now uh, running that, that company. But Jeremiah has built a number of production bread ovens across the country. And so he came back in January and was really the lead um, for building the core of this oven. So all the fire brick and the refractory components of the oven the guts of it that really work. And it was great because Lily got to come then and helped us lay a number of the bricks for the sidewalls. And I think she came back later that week and we were working on the dome. So that was, um, I think really, a, it was good for her to see sort of the seeds of what started there. And then um, over the summer, uh, Lily was, my primary helper in um, getting this brickwork done around around the core. And in particular, you know, this area, I kind of call it her corner because she worked here and like most of this is all her work. We were working side by side and, um, and she can tell you a little more about that. But just to kind of give you an idea of scale, if you look over here, this is the remnants from the original oven, okay? And so where you see, these are fire bricks, 
And so what this is, this is the haunch for the arch. So this is basically where the arch started. And, um, you know, but if you fire this, if, uh, if you follow this all the way around, you can see how massive the original oven was. And it was somewhat of an L shape. And we've been trying to um, piece back together sort of how it was used. Um, it appears that the fire was here though, because that's where the bricks are the cleanest. And then we know that there was a chimney back there somewhere. And so as the wood smoke kind of roiled through, that's why you have more soot, you know, back in the corners and going along. So this thing was absolutely massive. Huge. And um, what we have here now is this oven is a production size oven. Um, it can hold, I believe, about 30 loaves of bread. And when it gets fired, you build a tremendous fire inside of it and let all the coals and everything burn down. And then it gets scraped out, goes into these ash pits, which dump out. But, and then this door will go in and you can load the oven. And with one wood fire to prep it, you can um, load the oven five times. So at full production, uh, it should be able to throw out 150 loaves of firing. Um, and we've already started baking with it, which is great. We have a few more things to do to get a certificate of occupancy here. Uh, they have to hook up the sewer to the uh, to the road, and uh, but everything else is pretty much ready to go. And then there's uh, we have to get the accessibility entrance squared away. Uh, there's going to be a ramp that's going out front. So this is a national historic site. This so the the old labor hall is a national historic landmark, okay. which is actually a little bit higher in significance than. Um, being listed on the National Register, okay. it, it, um, it, and it, it's listed because, you know, of its um, connections to the socialist, Italian socialist labor movement, um, and the development of the granite industry in Barrie because it was really a hub for a lot of the workforce that emigrated when Barrie really started booming in the late 1800s, mm -hmm. and there's an out, outfall that. So yes, yeah, so this is, uh, a really important site altogether, and um, this is contributing to that significance. Oh, yeah. Hi, everybody. Finally. No worries. Good morning. Good morning. So I was just giving them a lowdown, a little bit of the history here, and okay. showing them some of the stuff that we've done. Yeah. And we were just taking a look at the oven. Um, so, just as part of the the training that we've been doing here with masonry, we're focusing now on the exterior, um, doing repointing, but I think, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the process of laying bricks and understanding how they go together is beneficial in what we're doing now as we're chiseling mortar and repointing the areas that are damaged outside. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and we've talked a lot about, and you've talked a lot about some of the repairs that were done on the outside of this building that are just terrible. Not yet. We haven't gone outside yet, but yes. Oh, well, <laughs> we've talked a lot about some of the repairs, just like people just using cement mortar pretty much instead of like all cement mostly, and it just, the bricks that can't expand or anything, and so they, they crack. And there's whole sections on the outside that have just been, like, they're falling apart. Like, we can't, the bricks have been broken, like, the face, and more and more just keeps falling off because they can't squeezed in there too tight. Yeah, and the cement mortars also trap moisture in the wall. And because of our climate, we have freeze-thaw cycles. And so if the wall gets wet and the moisture gets trapped in there, that's when it, uh, the mortar joints are sort of where the wall's supposed to breathe. And when, that get, when, it, when the moisture can't come out of that, it comes through the brick and that's where it starts to, as Lily was saying, you know, there's different types of damage that we've seen. So. Um, so, it's been, I think, 
I'm ha I, a lot of times with the repointing, that's all you're doing is just fixing the joints and um, chiseling out the mortar, putting new mortar in, but that's what I was glad that we got the opportunity to work on this too because I think it's important to understand sort of the core trade and how, you know, how is a brick wall built first before you can understand how to repair it necessarily. I'm doing some visits to the state house as they've been working to restore all of that and regild all of it. Um, we went up for the first time last fall and then again in the spring. Did we go up in the spring? I uh, we yep. Did. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because I remember you coming back to school with gold. <laughs> yeah. Over your yeah. Yeah, we went nice. in the spring and then we went. Yeah. But that was this fall, I think. That I, that yeah, the that gilding was this fall. fall. We went up in the spring. So in the spring, uh, oh, I was looking at the project. They, well, they were stripping it still. Right. right. That's and so, yeah, we've, we've yeah. gone up three times. Um, yeah. The first time we went up as an introduction before anything happened. Yeah. And we were, then we went back to the office and we were looking at the plans yeah. for the project. Um, then once they started the project, we went up and we met the team that was stripping the finishes off of the dome and repairing the copper roof that's there, which is neat because it's the original copper roof from the second state house back in 1850s. And so people are trying to figure out how, if that, there's claims that that might be the oldest extant roof on a building in Vermont. Hmm. And so we're trying to see the validity of yeah. that statement. But, um, <laughs> and then as the project progressed, as our last visit, we got to go up and meet the gilding team uh, and spend more time with them and actually got, and I got to try it as well, yeah, which was really yeah. exciting. We all had to, uh, we got a chance to try our hand literally at um, yeah. putting the gold uh, leaf onto the dome. And another component is we've been looking at the sculpture as well. Yeah. And so um, that is still to happen. So we'll have at least one more visit back to the dome when Sirius is placed back on top. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. You guys can just do your thing. Don't worry about me. Okay. okay. I'm trying not to. <laughs> <laughs> So just, I'll give you guys just a couple other things too. So this is the plan for what's going to be happening here. Um, and so here's the oven, which is a slightly different design at, um, than is there now, but about the same size. And so um, this essentially will all be classroom space with these tables. Um, and these were actually uh, built by students up at U32. Um, which is kind of cool too. There's been a lot of other, um, and then, you know, Lily and I got a chance to work with some kids from Youth Built. Um, and uh, they've, they've helped the Historical Society with a lot of the work here. They put a new roof on, they um, helped do some other, a lot of the cleaning, and they actually cleaned all the bricks, most of the bricks for us. We did a little bit of cleaning here, um, but, uh, it, there was a lot of involvement, which is great. There's a lot of young people involved here, which I think is really important because um, there's often a disconnect, I think, between, you know, like the history of the community and where people are now, and it's, I think it's really important. So it's been exciting to, to, to have that energy and, and focus here. The back section will be, um, over on that side, will be uh, storage and refrigerator units, and eventually, with a little more fundraising, a walk-in cooler. Uh, and then that section over there is uh, office. And I mean, you can see, like, he just sprayed it all down, and already the brick is dry. Um, he just sucked it all in. Mm. All the water. There you go. Thanks. <laughs> We're always the same. <laughs> so, um, what we're doing outside here is repairing the mortar joints that are missing or 
uh, have been cracked and we've already gone through and chiseled out all the loose material and now we're going and we're packing in the mortar and the mortar that we're using is a traditional lime based mortar it's one part lime to three parts sand uh, and has no cement in it and that was what was used originally uh, to build the building um, so it's important for the formulation to be right to keep the same compressive strength there have been a number of different uh, repairs around the building and so different mortar colors so we're not so concerned at the moment with the fact that it doesn't match exactly in color we'll be able to go back later and um, put a little uh, like a dirty wash on top of it which will help it to blend in uh, better and uh, but getting the it we're using the appropriate materials and, and installing them the correct way as Lily was saying earlier there's a lot of places around here where uh, basically just concrete was sort of smeared into these spots and that's not the right material which is why we also have some of these areas here you can see where the damage is this is what we were talking about with the bricks spalling and that's mostly because of the, the moisture that is rising up and then it that's the zone of evaporation where it wants to get out of the building and so um, we're really just trying to button the building up for this winter and then next spring um, there'll be yet one more campaign to sort of finish the rest of the exterior masonry but um, the lime mortar takes a while to cure and harden it hardens through carbonation which is absorbing um, co2 and it's different than a cement mixture where when you add the water there's a direct chemical reaction and it starts off a chain reaction that hardens it in a very short amount of time so it this it's a longer process and it requires a lot more care and attention so um but anyway that's that's sort of the context of what the work is that we're doing here okay so you want to just uh, and so this is the mortar, this line mortar is actually mortar that we made last year and it's been being it was stored down in the basement and it can stay in that bucket and it'll be good to use almost forever as long as you keep it covered put a little water on top of the plastic and it, then it, if the air can't get to it then it doesn't have the opportunity to carbonate so um,